Hello and good day everyone! Welcome to the Live Life Conference 2021. I am Bo. I am RJ Moriones, a lay missionary for the Live Christ, Share Christ mission, serving in the Live Life Pillar. Family is an important component of society and of the church. It is the primary unit of communities and it is the domestic church. That is why in this conference, we wanted to highlight the family and how it can be a source of love and life to every individual, to the community, and to the world. There are many reasons to celebrate this year, even if we are still in the pandemic. The crisis we are in right now will not dampen our spirits to know more about the plan of God for ourselves and for our families. We are happy to share with you this event that will highlight our desire to be a gift to others and our eagerness to celebrate the beauty of marriage, family, and life. The pandemic will not stop us in proclaiming the gospel of life to everyone. We, in Live Life, are empowered by the Holy Spirit to become God's beacon of light to the ends of the earth. As we celebrate 500 years of our Christian faith, and as we observe the Amores Laetitia Family Year, we bring to you the Live Life Conference 2021 Sessions on Demand. We created Sessions on Demand videos to help appreciate the beauty of marriages and family and to develop a society that embraces the culture of life. We want everyone, yes, to be empowered with the truth as we all respond to the constant attack of evil forces against families. We want all of you to appreciate the beauty of life and respond by sharing this gift to everyone. As you watch at the comfort of your homes, we want you to open your mind and heart to everything that will be shared and revealed to you. Be assured that the speakers were handpicked and they are the best in their fields to discuss the topics presented. It will be an exciting opportunity to learn. We have prepared two segments for the workshop, the culture of life and the culture of death. In the culture of life segment, we will highlight ways on how we can build up a strong family for Christ and empower everyone to embrace the gospel of life at home. And as for the culture of death, we will, we will enlighten everyone about the realities of this culture that opposes God's way for families and marriages. We will offer to our participants ways on how to address these issues and become a light to everyone. We promise you that these online sessions will help and equip us to further the mission of proclaiming the gospel of life to everyone. Let us be bearers of God's light to the world. Let us lead everyone back home so that they may see God's amazing love and beautiful plan for every family. Have a grace-filled day ahead of you. Enjoy and God bless. In our country today, there are groups that is seeking to legalize abortion. Their battle cry, I have a right to my own body. My body, my choice. Abortion can be safe. First of all, we need to realize that we do not actually own this body. If we owned it, then we can keep it safe from disease and aging. But experience has shown us that no matter the advances in science and medicine, people still get sick. We become old and gray, and we die if we own our body. Therefore, we have a total control over it, and we can immortalize it. Granting that we own our bodies, then the child in the womb also owns his own body, and therefore, the life he has cannot be taken away without his consent. And this is exactly what happens in abortion. The unborn child has no energy, no voice, no facility to stop his death. Abortion is safe. Consult any medical book, any medical journal, and you will see a list of all the complications of abortion. 
bleeding, cramping, dizziness, drowsiness, vomiting, perforation of the uterus, infection of the uterus or the fallopian tubes, scarring of the inside of the uterus, sepsis or septic shock, uterine perforation, infertility, and sexual dysfunction. Abortion is a major factor in the breast cancer epidemic around the world. Breast cancer in America has increased by 50% since abortion was legalized in 1973. According to Dr. Joel Bryant, professor of human biology and endocrinology, abortion of the first pregnancy interrupts the natural growth of the breast, leaving millions of cells at risk. Of course, this hypothesis has been continually questioned by medical professionals and governments, legislators, who promotes that abortion is safe. There is also an 81% increase in mental health problem, anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts. Post-abortion suicide is growing into phenomenon rate in the U.S. Suicide Anonymous, a national fellowship in the U.S. similar to Alcoholics Anonymous, reports that panic and distress grip a woman after an abortion because all the feelings are allowed to remain unreal. They keep all that unexpressed emotion and unshared experience deep down inside of them where it keeps growing like a pressured tumor of pain. They postpone acknowledging what they are feeling until the subconscious throws it forward and they go through mental health. There is guilt, shame, depression, and lowered self-esteem. Insomnia, sorrow, helplessness, anniversary reactions, dreams, relieving are all part of it. She begins to consider suicide and often becomes sexually dysfunctional, perhaps unable to maintain a stable relationship, and often goes into chemical dependency. Those guilt feelings have little to do with religious beliefs or faith. Abortion violates something very basic in a woman because a woman, women, are natural givers of life. Abortion affects men too. After abortion, men may experience anxiety, guilt, helplessness, and anger. These painful emotions may be expressed in substance abuse or some or other risk-taking behaviors. Negative emotions may progress to clinical depression, angry outbursts, or severe anxiety that impairs concentration. Men may also experience delayed grief reactions and be at risk for unresolved or complicated grief. Some men choose homosexual relationships thinking that it is safer to be with a man than being with a woman. Abortion is inhumane, not only because the baby is killed, but by the way the aborted fetus is used. In 1995, it was reported that fetus were being eaten in China some people in China believe that eating fetus will make their complexion better and will treat diseases like asthma and other conditions. Fetuses aficionados, as they are called, prepare fetus combined with ginger, peel, and pork, and they make it in a stew or soup. In countries where abortion is legal, like in the U.S., Animals are better treated than human beings. In the state of Florida, for example, the eggs of sea turtles are protected from being smashed, while human beings can be killed readily by its mother through abortion. Relationships are stressed by abortion. Re reports of relationship failure vary from 25% to 70%. Some men will withdraw from relationships particularly intimate relationships with women. Others may become promiscuous, and still others may experience sexual problems such as impotence. Healthy communications between partners is often decreased after abortion, and most couples never mention or talk about the abortion that happened. Abortion is not and can never be safe. 
it is a solution of desperation, a quick fix. What the abortion is good crowd is asking us is to ignore a natural sense of good embedded within our consciences that tells us what is right and wrong. Civil society should not promote it. Government should not legislate it. Our faith forbids it. The fifth commandment says, Thou shall not kill. Human life is sacred because it involves the creative action of God from the beginning, and it remains forever in a special relationship with the Creator, who is the sole end. God alone is the source of life from beginning to end. No one can, under any circumstance, claim for himself the right to end the life of another human being. In the book of Exodus, it is written, chapter 23, verse 7, Do not kill the innocent or the just, for I will not acquit the wicked. To those who say that it is, this is just blood, that this is not yet a human being, tell me, are you saying that we living persons originated from a non-living thing? Do not fool yourself. That tiny blot of blood is the beginning of human life. That tiny blot of blood is a masterpiece of God, a complete human being. Nothing will be added at the time of the union of the sperm and egg until the death of a man and woman except growth and development of what is already there. All he needs is time to develop and mature. And yes, no subsequent child can ever be created again. A distinctive and irreplaceable child is involved in every pregnancy and in every abortion. Every human person is irreplaceable. No woman can say that she will just abort her child because it is not the right time for her. And anyway, she will have other children in the future. It does not work that way. And each pregnancy not only entails the creation of a unique individual human being, but it also entails the creation of a mother and a father. It is procreation that propels a man and a woman into their new role as a parent. Whether the child is allowed to be born or not, the role of a man and woman in the creation of new life signifies an elemental reality which no legal, societal, or medical act can alter. Although abortion ends the life of a child, it can never kill the sense of a man and woman's parenthood. Those who seek to legalize abortion advocate for pregnancies caused by rape. Before deciding to abort, remember that most of the trauma has already happened. She has been raped. That trauma will be with her all her life. So will abortion be best for her? Or will it bring more harm? What has happened and its damage has already occurred. Will she be able to live comfortably knowing that she had killed her own baby? Or would she ultimately be more at peace with herself, knowing that she allowed her baby to be born? And a woman needs to remember that although this child was fathered by a rapist, this child is also her own child. What of incest? Incest is intercourse by a father and, her, and his daughter an uncle and his niece, maybe even a brother and his sister. It usually involves a very sick man, often a sick mother, who actually knows what is happening, even if not consciously admitting it, and an exploited child. It is twisted logic to advise abortion in pregnancies from incestuous relationships. Why punish the child? for the crime of his father. What is the current Philippine situation? The president has declared as national priority the implementation of measures to address the roots of teenage pregnancy. 
it has mobilized government agencies for this purpose. Executive Order No. 141 states the number of unwanted teenage pregnancies are expected to rise as girls already living in dysfunctional homes spend more time with their household as a result of the pandemic and are therefore exposed to abuse. And one of the strategies proposed is to strengthen the adolescent's capacity to make autonomous and informed decisions about her sexual and reproductive rights by ensuring access to sex education and reproductive health rights and services. In short, make contraceptives available to teenage girls. Can you imagine the long-term effects these contraceptives will have on the bodies and on the minds of these young girls. Not to mention the fact that contraceptives actually fail to prevent pregnancies. So when contraception fails, pregnancy happens and abortion is encouraged. What can we do? Parents, we should take care of forming our own conscience so that we can also form the consciences of the next generation. We need to build a home where openness is encouraged and dialogue is promoted. Our speech should always be life-giving. Let us bring up our children in the love and fear of God. Teach them about the sacraments. Teach them about devotions. Let us teach our children that church is essential. Let us be mindful of their relationships. Who are their friends? Who do they hang out with? Let them know that we are mindful of their activities and genuinely concerned for their welfare. Ask them about their plans for the future, their hopes and their dreams, their career plans. Ask them too about their fears and anxieties. When the inevitable happens, and it happens to the best, Give them your unconditional love and support. Now, many times, the young are very afraid, very scared to tell their parents that they are pregnant. If they come from a loving home, they are ashamed to, to discourage their parents who have given them all that they need. If they come from very conservative and strict homes, then they are scared of what their parents will do to them or will say to them. So a word to parents, be sensitive to the moods and activities of your children. If they look problematic, if they are staying in their room most of the time, if they refuse to talk to you, if they are you know, not anymore grooming themselves, then that could be a red flag that they are into something serious. Talk to them. If pregnancy happened, then at least they will be getting the best advice from you as a parent. Rather than getting the advices from people outside who will tell them that it is not time, that that is just that is not yet a human being, that is just blood, and we know that there is a person who can help you with your problem. St. John Paul II in Familiaris Consortio exhorts parents to trustingly and consciously train their children in the essential values of human life. Children must be enriched not only with a sense of true justice, which leads to respect for the personal dignity of every human person, but also, and more powerfully, by a true sense of love. Faced with a culture that large, largely reduces human sexuality to something, to the level of something commonplace, linking it solely with the body, and with selfish pleasure, parents must aim firmly at the training in the area of sex that is fully and truly personal and it manifests its inmost meaning in leading the person to the gift of self in love. St. John Paul II II further states that education for chastity is essential, for it is a virtue that develops a person's authentic maturity and makes him more capable of respecting and fostering the nuptial meaning of the body. 
to those of us in mission, let us continue to monitor the legislative agenda, promote the welfare of the family, and be the voice of the helpless unborn. It happens that a woman cannot afford to have a baby, and there is no support from any family. When faced with an unwanted pregnancy, adoption may be considered. Adoption, rather than abortion, is the loving and heroic option. Yet studies show that only 4% of women with unwanted pregnancy give up their children for adoption. Women who give up their babies for adoption are more at peace with their decision, knowing that they have placed their child in a family where they could have the life that they deserve. Needless to say, although there are positive feelings that reside around the adoption experience, such as relief, gratitude, acceptance, primary among all the emotions experienced by those who do not have their child because of adoption is grief. Surely there is loss. The opportunity to parent their child is lost. There is pain. Studies have shown that feelings of grief activate the same areas of, of the brain associated with pain. It can be hard, but as most women who gave up their babies for adoption admits, there is peace in knowing that they have given their child to a loving family where he could have the life he deserved. Giving up your child for adoption is still the better option than abortion. And yes, many families long to adopt. I have a number of family members, friends in my own circle who has adopted children because they cannot bear their own child. And I have seen how blessed are the children placed in adoptive homes. They are showered with love and given much opportunities in life. Of course, there are many issues to be addressed in adoption. When is the right time to tell a child that he is adopted? The search for the biological parent? Feelings of abandonment for the adopted child? Maybe even betrayal. But these are still better than helplessly killing the unborn. The good news, there are many support systems in our society today. So if you are leaving the trauma because you had an abortion or you have a problematic pregnancy or you have problems with adoption, get in touch with the organizers of this event and they will lead you to the right pe people to talk. I would like to end this talk on abortion and adoption by teaching you a prayer that you can say every day. All of us are asked to adopt an unborn, an unborn child. And through our daily prayers for that unborn child, it is our hope that this child will see the light of day. This is the prayer. And I will begin with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, Mary, Joseph, I love you very much. I beg you to spare the life of the unborn baby whom I have spiritually adopted and who is in danger of abortion. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. I am glad that you were born.